Welcome to you all to our seventh Sunday in the season of Pentecost. We are worshiping together the congregations of Tillamook United Methodist Church, Nehalem Bay United Methodist Church, Camp Magruder, and Bay City United Methodist Church. I am Steve Wolf, the resident pastor at Nehalem Bay and the coordinating pastor for the cooperative ministries, and we are joined by the Reverend Trista Wynn, who is the lead pastor at Tillamook United Methodist. Now, in her first week, Trista has preached. She has attended a church board meeting and led a memorial service for one of the great saints of that congregation. So she is now an old hand at uh, what is going on around this particular church and this particular area. Now, to our technical needs. We... Uh, invite you to, first of all, keep yourselves muted unless we're having a talking back and forth section. We'll let you know about those. If you go up to the top and hit speaker view, you will see the main speaker with your fellow congregants across the top or down the side. If you go down to the bottom of your screen and click on the chat, it will open up an area where you can chat in your prayer requests and we will read them later during our worship service. For those of you who are coming to us uh, by telephone or have everything uh, closed down, you won't be able to see all of these things, but we'll try to keep our dead air time to a minimum. Today, we'll be hearing scriptures from Francis Hartwell and from Betty Hickey. We will have special music from the Tillamook United Methodist Choir. The hymns uh, will be brought to us with the words on the screen and background singing by the Tillamook United Methodist Choir and by Ben Douglas of Bay City United Methodist Church uh, so that you might sing along. We are having some breakout rooms today, so accept the invitation when it comes on your screen. Remember to unmute and say hello to everyone. So it's... Uh, the wallflower question today is what some people have called it. Have you ever been in a group where everybody seems to be in sync? Everybody seems to be into it, but um, you are just at the margins. Somehow you are on the margins of the group. How does that feel? So with that, let us worship God together.
Please join me for the call to worship. Come, sing and dance before the Lord. Praise God with the sound of music and dancing. Let every soul sing God's praises. Let the mountains tremble and the seas roar. Praise the King of glory who guides our lives. Praise the Lord of hosts who watches over us. Amen. I invite you to sing with Ben Douglas. Today's reading is from the sixth chapter of Samuel 2, verses 1 through 19. David again brought together all the able young men of Israel, 30,000. He and all his men went to Balak in Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty who was enthroned between the cherubim on the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which is on the hill. Uzzah and Ahil, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it. And Ahil was walking in front of it. David and all the of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums, and cymbals. So David went to bring up the Ark of God from the house of Aben Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf, wearing a linen ephod. David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sounds of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, 
She despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. And then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went to their homes. Well, this is a particularly appropriate year for us to be reading about the Ark of the Covenant since we have just passed the 40th anniversary of Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, now, according to the biblical description of the Ark of the Covenant, it really did look like it did in that movie, which is about the only thing they got right. Well, that and the hat. Inside the Ark, was the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod that he had done the miracles with, and a jar of manna. It was that the ark, that is, is con was considered to be the seat of God on earth. So you can see that this was a very exciting event. Jerusalem, David's new capital city, now to be the home of God, right down, right there, downtown. What a celebration. I mean, there was going to be a big barbecue. There was singing. There was dancing. Everyone was invited. The only thing missing was hot air balloons and pony rides. And right out in front of it, the king himself, dancing down the street, wearing only a loincloth. I mean, talk about the emperor's new clothes. But David is young and beautiful. And who could blame him? Well, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. That's who. I mean, what a pot, party pooper. This Michal sounds just like a contrary person. Now, we who follow the lectionary don't hear much about Michal. But she was the daughter of the first king of Israel, Saul. She was a sister of David's best friend, Saul's son, Jonathan. And she was David's first wife. Michal and David loved each other. But that was before the death of Saul and Jonathan in battle with David. That was before David's cruel taunting of Michal for her childlessness. That was before Bathsheba. Lots of water went under that bridge and lots of other stuff too. Now seeing David prancing down the street, undignified, unselfconscious, a giddy display of power and privilege, Michal despises him in her heart. And that doesn't make her sound like a very attractive person. David, for all his faults, at least was fun. Yet, haven't we all been in Michal's place at some time? That outsider at the party, sitting on the margin, left out, maybe seeing more than anyone else of what's really going on under it all. Aren't we all Michal's sometimes? You know, it makes me wonder, have you ever been the one who was, just couldn't get excited about what everyone else was celebrating? What is, what, what is it like to be the one in the corner with the questions while everybody else is partying? How do you feel? Now, I want you to think, in, when you think about this, remember, we're using parties symbolically here. I mean, think of it as any time when everyone else is in step, in agreement, and you're the outsider. We're going to go into our breakout rooms now. Be sure to accept the invitation that pops up to unmute yourself, say hello. 
you aren't asked to lay bare your soul. But have you ever been where Michel was? Have you ever felt like that? And what does it feel like? Betty, if you would, distribute us to our rooms now. Normally, when you all came back, I would ask you to share something you'd heard from someone else. But, uh, you know, we've been talking, possibly talking about some pretty tender places. So let me just ask you in one or two words, some of the feelings you heard expressed. Sadness. Sadness. Resentment. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What was that? Resentment. Ah, uh, resentment. Rejection. Mm -hmm. Rejection. And alone. Loneliness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loneliness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Progress. Awkwardness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you unmuted? Yeah. Okay. So I can shout and say things. They'll mute us pretty soon. Okay. Yep, that's a promise. We will mute you pretty soon. Anything else you'd like to share? Uh, isolation. Isolation. I was in here earlier. I was in here earlier. All attracted, whoever. Well, as so often happens in the lectionary readings, part of the return of the ark was left out. I don't know why they do this. You know, maybe they just want us to not have to deal with the difficult parts. So let me read to you what got left out today. Second Samuel 6, and it's 6 through 10, you know, it's right, it starts in right after the ark has been put onto that new cart and they've set out. And when they came to the threshing floor at Nakan, Uzzah reached out his hand to the ark uh, and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it, and the anger of the Lord kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him down there, because he reached out his hand to the ark, and he died there beside the ark of God. David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how can the ark of the Lord come into my care? So David was unwilling to take the ark of the Lord into his care in the city of David. Instead, David took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all of his household. And it was told to King David, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David brought up the ark of God to the, from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. So when we read this part that's been left out, things seem a little more complicated than just like the headline of, well, at a good time was had by all. When we hear the story, this story, it's so natural for us to come down on David's side, you know, to be afraid and angry with God. I mean, how can we take care of God's stuff if God is going to be going around being so grouchy and he keeps smiting people? Well, I don't know about God, or how God feels or why. I do know that I could be like David sometimes, though. I want the blessing, but the responsibility that goes with it, not so much. And when the blessing comes back, you can sign me up. But I've also, like all of you, been with Michal. I have felt her feelings and the feelings of those with her on the margins. You know those people, the very poor, the very young, the very old. Women, the abused, people of color the LGBTQ community, all these that we, we put out to the margins. And now in this time of great coming out that we're having, that we are experiencing, we find the people at the margins are those who are scared of what's next. And those 
who can't be vaccinated, the very young, those with compromised immune systems. Without honoring those feelings, without feeling those feelings, without going ourselves to meet the mechels, there is no party. There is no blessing. There is no freedom. There is only idolatry. It, it's in sharing that memory, those memories of times when we were on the margins too, when we were not part of the party, when we can remember how that feels, we can finally realize that the neighborhood where the eternal God chose to pitch its tent is not just ours, but it's everyone's. And now that is something worth celebrating. I invite you now to listen to the Tillamook United Methodist Choir as they sing, I will sing to the Lord. Our epistle. Betty, you suddenly lost your mute. My mute went away. Um, praise for spiritual blessings in Christ. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, 
he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory, God's chosen people. Well, both of our scriptures today uh, talk about worship. Our reading from the letter to the Ephesians gives us a reminder of why it is that we come together to worship in the first place. And in our Old Testament scripture, we read that David was leading worship from the very midst of the people. In our Old Testament scripture, the newly appointed King David is learning what it means to lead from a place of alignment with the spirit of the living God. He is learning and he is growing. He's made mistakes and he's trying to reconnect with the spirit of the living God. And so he knows that it's important to come together to worship, but not only worship from his high and lofty place, but to come into the midst, into the center of the people, into the town square. Now we have discussed and read about his way of worshiping with full abandon, offering his very best right in the center of all the people and that it was viewed by some in power as being inappropriate. A king in those days was one who was supposed to be distinguished apart from and separated from the everyday people. The aristocracy is not supposed to mix and mingle with the common folk. Leading from the front, that's the way things are supposed to be done. One must step forward and pull the people behind you or move them along with your own agenda and make sure that no one gets out of line. Leading with power and dictatorship, this is how a kingdom ought to be run. But David was not from the aristocracy, even though power had, as Stephen Wolf has spoken about, um, gotten to his head and he made some mistakes and did some things that were not kind. Um, he was learning and remembering how to be in the midst of the people in our passage. He was born into the midst of people. He came from simple means and he's reconnecting to his roots. He listened to the animals he was connected to the earth in his days of youth. He cared for the little sheep who were lost and afraid, and he chased away predators who threatened those he was given charge over. When he was young, David heard the spirit of God whispering in the winds. He sang simple songs composed on his homemade instruments to pass the time as he watched the birds of the air and the clouds in the sky. From the days of his youth, David was deeply connected to the divine through the natural world all around him. This was the foundation that fueled his way of worshiping. And this was the foundation for how he would lead from the center of the people. For David, worship was not about being in a particular place or saying specific creeds or praying in ways that were high and lofty. Worship with earthy, elemental, connected, even sensual and sensory. Connecting with God was about connecting with nature, 
feeling the fullness of creation and experiencing the exhilaration of a racing heartbeat through drumming and stomping and the clapping and the dancing with all of his might. He did not feel the need to dress in fine linens or wear fancy clothing. Connecting with God had come very naturally to him as a child. And so as he receives the Ark of the Covenant into the midst of the people, he reconnects with God as in the days of his youth. Connecting with God came so naturally to him, uh, in fact, that the scriptures say he only wore a linen ephod or a simple loin cloth around his waist when he incited the whole people of Israel to drum and sing and dance with fervor before the Lord. Now, I want to say that I really appreciate high church and have a, a, a high regard for a well-written liturgy. I love beautiful architecture and find stained glass glorious, particularly as the sun rises or sets behind them. And that said, I think that we have done a disservice to limit worship to happening within a particular building over these many generations. And I think that our ways of worshiping can sometimes become dry and dull. We can get stuck in a rut in the ways that we worship together and we can find it hard to imagine doing things differently than they were done before. I have been in churches for most of my life and in the majority of them, worship does become fairly predictable. Now this can be comforting and it can also become a limitation. And we can box ourselves in, expecting worship to always be the way we have remembered it in the past. But being a part in these COVID times has given us plenty of time to reflect on what we might reimagine worship to be like. These Zoom worships are so different than what they are like in person. And we are just beginning to get our feet wet again. We are just beginning to start playing with what it means to be worshiping together in person and yet still be connected with the marginalized as Reverend Wolf was speaking about earlier. I love worship. I love designing a good service and implementing it well. I love crafting the prayers and creating liturgies and designing something that stimulates the imagination so that all the participants with all the different learning styles can connect with God in one way or another. I like contemplating deeply and meditating quietly. And I love singing joyfully with gusto and even as John Wesley said, singing lustily and with great pizzazz and courage in the midst of the whole people in order to encourage the Holy Spirit to light the sacred fire in our very hearts. I love worship. Matthew, my husband and I fell in love while leading worship together in church in our youth. He is a drummer and he loves to create. He has a special knack for making nearly anything into a percussion instrument. So there's always some sort of rhythm pulsing through our house. So King David's way of connecting with God makes me think a little bit about my husband and his homemade instruments. And I will share some of them with you sometime. We have a whole room of instruments at the parsonage. And until each one began to find its own place in a closet or on a shelf, and some of them are still there, um, our selection of drums and guitars and stringed instruments pretty much took up the whole floor of what will in time be the guest room and the creativity den. Having an outlet where we can connect with God through our creative endeavors is a really important part of our relationship as a couple. Leading creative worship experiences has been an incredible blessing to us in the past, and we hope to be able to offer some of those worship experiences here in this place and in this online community as well. So as we gather together, this whole congregation, our extended church family, as we really begin to emerge from our cocoon of COVID times, 
I'd like us to consider what it is that helps us to connect with God. Where do you hear God's voice most clearly? How do you experience God's presence most deeply? What has enriched your prayer life in the past? And what would you like to explore in the future? What prayers are nourishing to your spirit? What brings you comfort in times of grief? How do you express joy and delight in the natural world where the divine dwells? And what does it look like to co-create with God? Allow these questions to simmer inside of you and mull them over for a while. As we come back together as a community of faith and we continue to reach out to those on the margins, as we begin to develop relationships together in a new and different way, what might the Spirit of God be calling us to do with our worship experiences? We have the freedom now to worship in many ways. And how will we give thanks for that freedom? May the spirit of love and creativity guide us in our explorations. Amen. Now, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, I invite you to listen in contemplation to Psalm 24, as interpreted by poor Bishop Hooper.
morning, everyone. Now it's the time for our prayers of joys and concerns. And Steve Fulmer has asked everyone to prayers for Giovanni and his family in Guatemala. The entire family has acquired COVID at their church and are quite sick. Prayers also for the reopening process of the church and continued prayers for my sister-in-law, Beth, her daughters, Megan, Jennifer, grandchildren, and family. And also prayers for John Cooper Smith that he will heal quickly. Prayers for peace and harmony. Will you please join me in a word of prayer? Beloved creator, creative dreamer, you who imagined us here and now, even in the time before time, great and holy God, we are so grateful that we can connect with you no matter where we are. There is not a place that we can go where you and your spirit are not already present. And this is an incredible blessing. Help us to become more and more aware of your spirit in our midst. Help us to remember that we are never alone, no matter what we are facing. In times of grief, in times of loss, in times of deepest sorrow and distress. You are with us. In times of elation, in times of joy, in times of celebration and delight and dancing with all of our might, you are with us. When we are gathered in the church building, when we are climbing the mighty mountains, when we are sailing over the ocean blue, when we are digging down into the depths of the earth, when we are working in the fields, when we are caring for our loved ones, when we are sick, and when we are dying, you are with us. Holy Spirit, Remind us of your presence, no matter where we find ourselves this week. Help us to feel connected with one another. Help us to reach out to those in the margins. Help us when we ourselves feel marginalized. Help us to develop compassion. Help us to live in lives that are gracious, live in ways that are gracious. Help us to comfort the grieving and comfort us when we grieve. When our lives are in tumult, when we are surrounded in a sea of boxes, you are with us. When we are settled and feeling at home and at peace, you are with us when we are caressing the face of our loved ones as they are taking their last breath, you, oh God, are with us. Help us to remember that you are always with us. Comfort us and guide us. Lead us in the ways of everlasting life. Help us to live good lives so that we can die a good death and return to you to your sacred heart in celebration and joyful acclamations with the jubilation of the saints. We will be together again, one way or another. And we give thanks for the presence of your spirit among us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to sing together the hymn, You Are Mine. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the face of God shine upon you. And may you know peace in the week to come. Amen. You're invited to join us at the same time in the same place for our uh, <clears throat> worship next week. The invitation that brought you here uh, will bring you to that service. Oops. Hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. Uh, we will also be sending the invitation out uh, along with posting it on Facebook and BBQ. Uh, previous services and all of our worship services in the past are available to you on YouTube. If you go to Tillamook County Methodist United, you'll be whisked to our upload page and be able to see them. Our congregations are in the process of setting our timelines for uh, in-person worship. You can uh, worship at 9.30 already at the Tillamook United Methodist Church. At Nehalem Bay United Methodist, we are working on how we will be doing our streaming from the live from the uh, sanctuary in August. And then for on the 12th of September, we'll be having in-person and streaming worship together. Our uh, congregations are working together as uh, on many different ministries right now, particularly around the uh, issues of food insecurity. So we invite you to participate in those either financially or we'll give you some ideas on how to do that uh, in person. Uh, now, beginning next week, all three of our congregations will be following the scriptures used in the camping curriculum at Camp Magruder, similar to what we did last summer. Uh, we will be accompanying these with some visual presentations, uh, video presentations. The themes are the spiritual things that we long for in our lives. Next week, we'll be longing to be called. And in a moment, uh, Steve will show you what that scripture will be. So with that, we bid you farewell, be blessed, and now we'll have our announcements. <clears throat> so you might want to grab a piece of paper or a pencil quickly, because as Pastor Steve just noted, we will be stepping away from the normal lectionary, and in a moment, we'll announce what the scripture will be. But... First, remember that all kids in North County have access to the Grub Club every day of the week. So 
keep that in mind. And if you have uh, any kids in your circle, please let them and their families know where those meals can be picked up. You see them there in front of you. They've been announced every week for the past month. Also remember that seniors have meals available at very low or no cost on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Nehalem Bay Church. This week, um, Chef Doug Dickey will be serving meatloaf and mashed potatoes on Tuesday and salmon and rice on Thursday. As always, there's a salad or a veggie and dessert included. Our food pantries uh, continue operation in the Halem on Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 10 until 2. We have recently purchased some narrow-waisted men's pants, but they are always welcome. So if you're cleaning house and find some slender pants, please turn them in. Sleeping pads are also desired. A Batilamuk Food Pantry similarly distributes food on Mondays from 4 to 6 in the early evening and Fridays midday from 11 until 1. Your perishable food donations and financial support are welcome. So here are the scriptures for next Sunday, the scripture single. Um, this is not the normal lectionary. We will be using the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. If you are in Bible study, you might want to consult with your leader to see which scriptures are actually being used by your group. Special thanks today to Betty Hickey behind the curtain. She also led our call to worship and uh, read one of our scriptures. Jenny Meyer for her prelude. Uh, Peter Nunn working in the background with his wonderful video production skills allowed Francis Hartwell to share scripture with us today. Ben Douglas, let us in be thou my vision. Poor Bishop Hooper shared Psalm 24 and the Tillamook Church Choir provided an interlude and led us in our closing hymn. Thank you, Patty, for uh, presenting our prayer requests, and Pastor Steve uh, actually led us in announcements and the blessing, and past Pastor Trista led us in the sermon and the congregational prayer. Sorry, the slide's not quite correct. I am Stephen Fulmer, your production assistant, and I want to thank all of you for joining us in spirit today. Blessings. <laughs>